Good God morning. <laughs> Good God morning. Good God morning. I am Rosa J doing it God's way each and every day. And I come here every day, sometimes in the morning. I'm trying to find that, that special time to come in. 6.30 is not working for me anymore. However, who knows? So I am here. I did say that I was going to be here at 8 o'clock, and here I am at 8. I am a little late. I apologize. Let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb so no one will decide to call me and interrupt. Thank you for allowing me the time to do that. Good morning, George. How are you? Thanks for coming. So I am Rosa J, doing it God's way each and every day, and I am determined and dedicated to share with you something that has amplified my life. Somebody called me or texted me, I want to become a metaphys metaphysician, someone who sees beyond the physical. That's what metaphysics means. Seeing beyond the physical, beyond, beyond the five senses, someone who allows your consciousness to expand into another realm of understanding. It says that uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I think allowing yourself, I know what this is what has happened to me, allowing myself to see beyond the, the physical, what's in front of me, hear beyond what I hear, um, touching and feeling and all that has allowed me to have a little freedom, a whole lot of freedom in my life. Not holding grudges, being um, accepting of other people, seeing God in everything, no matter what or how they show up. Forgiving everybody for ev everything um, and trying to control and doing a good job of it, I might add, I think, because my life is expanding of what I think, see, say, or even how I touch. To be able to walk in, in that love space, that space that God is. Because God is love. No matter what you've been, I, you know, I have to let go of all those religious beliefs of how man describes or uh, the adjectives that we have given God. Because for me, there is not a word in the English language that can truly, truly tell me who God is. I can read them, I can study it, but still I have to have that personal relationship that will allow me to be a part of God's mind, God's thinking, God's acting. I have to be the anointed one here on earth. And I think when that's what Christ means. When Jesus Christ came and he taught us, he actually showed us what to do. And if you think about it or you read about Jesus Christ, you see that he learned to submit to the will of God. And so we have to really learn to submit to the will of God and then make some choices because we do have that freedom of will. Of course, a miracle, a course in miracles has given me more than I have given it. Uh, and it's easy to do. It's very simple when you just say the statements and reflect on that in silence. Now I try to explain the statements or go through any rigmarole about how you debate it. No, it's not a debate. And I came up to the fact that I no longer debate. I just accept. And I am not trying to um, change any my, anyone over to my side. I'm just giving you a different view. And I love the Course in Miracles. It's simple, it's easy, it's not difficult for me. And in, in the beginning, it was a little difficult because of course we are human and therefore we wanna pick stuff apart. I stopped picking things apart. 
I either use it or leave it alone. So, Holy Father God, open our consciousness, open our heart to at least be willing to do something different, to see things differently, to feel things differently, to share that love, Father God, because we are the image and likeness of you, and we are to follow you, God. That's what you made us for. That's what you... We are to be the manifestation of you here on this planet. And so we draw other spirits who are searching, other people who are looking, other people who are willing to change, who are willing to expand their consciousness into the mere fact that we are yours and only yours, Father God. And you are love, therefore we are love. And so we say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us just this moment to do your will. Amen. Ashe. And so it is. So I want to thank you for joining me. I want you to want to thank you for sharing this. I want to thank you for being willing to look at this, to become a part of A Course in Miracles change the world if you and Wayne Dyer says if you change your perception you change your life and the life of others changing our perception so let's read what the course in miracles says today the thought for today is let me recognize the problem so i could so it can be solved let's say that let me recognize the problem so I can solve. It can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. For awareness is what we're looking for. What is the situation? What is the problematic situation? A problem cannot be solved if you do not know what it is. It can't be. Even if it is already solved, is even if it is really solved already, you will still have the problem because you will not recognize that it has been solved. If you don't know what the problem is, how you know, know whether or not it's been solved? This is the situation of the world. Huh? Don't think about it. Just take it in. The problem of separation, which is really the only problem, we have been separated from the God within us. It, could that possibly be the problem? It's really the only problem. Has already been solved. It's already been solved because there is no separation. Yet the solution is not recognized because the problem is not recognized. And we don't. We get all angry and upset and all that and not even realizing that that's not God. That's not who we were made. We don't. We have no separation. There is no separation. There is no looking for or seeking out because there is no separation. God has always been with us, always in us. God is faithful. God is who he is in us. Recognize the problem and the solution will be recognized. Everyone in this world seems to have his own special problems, yet they are all the same and must be recognized as one if the one solution that solves them all is to be accepted. That might sound a little heavy, but every problem is the same. It's like fear, false evidence appearing real. It's like love, hate, and dislike, and jealousy. All of those stem from fear. Now, all of them stem from the fact that we are separated or we think we're separated from the will of God. That's not true. Who can see that a problem has been solved if he thinks the problem is something else? Oh, if she would just do this, or oh, if he would have just done that, if my boss had given me a raise, if I had gotten that house, or if I had gotten that job, or 
all these things that we think we have problems with is really only one problem, being separated from God or thinking we are separated from God. God wants us to have everything we desire. There are no ifs and answers, but God is simple. Even if he is given the answer, even if you're given the solution, you may have gotten that job, but then up pops another problem. You may have gotten that husband or that wife, and then up pops another problem. You may have gotten that raise, and then up pops everything. There's always some problem that we see, but if we bring ourselves back to God, things will be different. So even if you're given the answer, we really can't see the relevance. How is it possible? How do we revere it? That is the position in which you find yourself now. You have the answer, but you still are still uncertain about what the problem is. Remember, everything that we see is an imagination, an illusion. The real problem is deeper. A long series of different problems seem to comfort you. And as one is settled, the next one and the next one arises. That's always a problem that we imagine to be. There seems to be no end to them. There is no time in which you feel completely free from problems and at peace. I was listening to something and the lady said, I know that this is a good solution, but I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Right, is that you? The temptation is, reg is to regard problems as many as is a temptation that keeps the problem of separation unsolved. So the idea that you're tempted to think that there are many problems actually keeps them from being unsolved or being then solved. The world seems to present you with a vast number of problems, each requiring a different answer. This Perception places you in a position in which your problem solving must be inadequate if failure is inevitable. Because there's only one problem thinking that you are separated from the great divine. No one could solve all the problems of the world appears to hold. They seem to be on so many levels in such varying forms and with such varied content that they confront you with an impossible situation. Dismay and desperation are inevitable as you regard them. Some spring up unexpectedly just as you think you have resolved the previous one. Others remain unsolved under a cloud of denial and raised to haunt you from time to time, only to be hidden again, but still unsolved. Hmm. All this complexity is about a desperate attempt not to recognize the problem and therefore not to let it be resolved. If you could recognize that you own, that only problem is separation. Your only problem is separation. Your only problem is separation. No matter what form it takes, you could accept the answer because you would see its relevance. Perceiving the underlining consistency, consistency, mm, consistency in all problems that seem to comfort you, you would understand that you have the means to solve them all. 
and you would use the means because you recognize the problem. No matter what other outlining problem you see in your life, the only one is the separation from God, you think. So what are we going to do about this? How are we going to, how are we going to, hey, Valerie, what's up, my sis? Good morning, good morning. And you are the solution. Once you actually see and understand that it is only your consciousness that wants to separate you from God, because God can solve all things. If you hand it over to God, he will give you the solution. It will, and you don't even have to do any action. Fix this one. I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, so I have moved into this whole realm of God can do all things. All I have to do is recognize and thank him for it and leave it alone. So I, I, I no longer work, but I have a bank account that I actually use I was using for the monies that I was getting from this job. And when my job ended, my bank account went haywire. They actually started charging me over amounts of money on a daily basis. So when I put the money in to fix it, I said, okay, God, it's unfair that they um, charged me for this when they knew I had told them that I had lost my job and that this was this and that and that. And they said, okay, but yet they still charged me. I looked at my bank account on my phone yesterday. <laughs> and they had reversed all the charges that they had charged me over the last couple of weeks. Now tell me that ain't God. I didn't make a phone call. I didn't do anything. I just said as I was putting the money into the account, and I put about maybe three, four hundred dollars in the account. Lord, they need to fix this. I desire them to return all my money that they have actually charged me unfairly. I know you can do it, and I thank you for it. And he did it. There is no separation from God. None didn't worry about it, didn't do anything about it, just thank God for it. And he did it. And it did go back. And it did. I got like two extra hundred dollars because they erased those fees. And I didn't even ask them. There is no separation from God. No. He wants to give us a, uh, our due. He wants to keep us abundant. He wants to... to uh, to, to fix life. So in the longer practices, practice periods today, we will ask what problem the problem is and what the answer to it is. We will not assume that we already know. We will try to free our minds of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have, we will try to realize that we only have one problem. We only have one problem, which we have failed to recognize. We will ask what it is and wait for the answer. We will be told. Then we will ask for the problem, the solution to it. Then we will ask for the solution. And we will be told that. The exercise for today will be successful to the extent to which you do not insist on defining the problem. Ask what the problem is and ask for the solution. Do not assume that you know what the problem is. And yes, you may have a lot of problems, but that's not what you're asking him to solve right now. You're asking him to solve the one problem, the problem of separation. Kuna, what is the problem? So that I may become, so that I may have the solution. Perhaps you will not succeed in letting all of the preconceived notions go? You might not, but that is not necessary. 
all that is necessary is that you entertain some doubt about the reality of your version of what the problems are. You are trying to recognize that you have been given the answer by recognizing the problem so that the problem and the answer can be brought together. You can be at peace. Father, let me recognize this problem so I can so it can be solved. Notice it did not say so I can solve it so that it can be solved. The shorter practice period for today will not be set by time, but by need. Whenever something arises, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. You will see many problems today, each one calling for an answer. You, our effects will be directed towards recognizing that there is only one problem and one answer. In this recognition, there are, are all problems resolved. In this recognition, recognition, excuse me, there is peace. When I recognize that there is only one problem, separation from God, everything else is resolved. But be not deceived by the form of the problems today. Whenever you any difficult seems to arise, tell yourself quickly, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Let's say that. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Then try to suspend all judgments about that. If possible, close your eyes for a moment and ask, what is it? You will be heard and you will be answered. You will be heard and you will be answered. It is simple as that. Yes. Very good. So, in order for you to be the co-creator, you have to recognize that the creator is in control. Release all problems that you think you have and just ask, creator, what, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. You might want to get, you might, you have to dismiss all those things that you think are problems. You have to recognize that there is only one problem. You know, it's funny because we are all, my belief, this is me. One of the things that um, came to mind to me uh, recently is that, that what the Bible says happened to Adam and Eve, we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And what did the Garden of Eden look like? And I believe that we are on our journey back to the Garden of Eden, to that space in our consciousness where all things are possible, where we are actually connected to the Creator so much so that everything we desire is manifested instantly. That things happen for our great, greater good. To learn how to become connected, one, with the creator. One with the creator so that we actually manifest like Jesus Christ did. Like he turned water to wine. Like he fed the hungry. Like he never had to worry about a place to live, what to eat. He had friends and people, and we, he cast out demons. He did all that stuff because he was solely connected to the creator. And was he not human? He flowed, blood flowed through him. But with that connection 
to the creator. We can change the world just by changing us. I am Rosa J doing it God's way each and every day. Ask God, what is the problem and how can it be solved? So whenever things get up in your spirit and people start spitting up and life starts getting a little bit difficult this day, remember before you react to anything trying to fix it, let me recognize the problem so it may be solved and just be quiet father let me recognize the problem so it can be solved father let me recognize the problem so it can be solved Ashe. and so it is have a good god day and knowing that the creator is here. Are you there with him? Namaste. Have a good God.